Bless God. Bless trust God. Praise God for Mary, Mary Thompson. Sister Mary Thompson, just believe God for her tonight. All right, that's the request. Praise God. Uh, we're so thankful for all of you here to pray, here to seek the Lord. Why don't we rise up together right now in the name of Jesus and the Lord just let your uh, power, your presence, the presence of the Holy Ghost, it's here, he's here, and he's here tonight. We feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost flooding this congregation with these songs, Lord. My, my, these songs of Zion, how they lifted us one after the other. Thank you for our praise team, the ministry of Sister Marla leading them. Thank you for the music backing them, the orchestra. Thank you, Lord, for the men and women worshiping you tonight, lifting their hands, opening their hearts, and praising the name of Jesus, dancing in the Holy Spirit, clapping their hands for joy. And we pray that across this whole place tonight, wherever there's a worshiper seated, that you will just infuse them with your word and with your life and with your anointing and let healing be for sister mary thompson tonight lord let healing be for sister maddie tonight lord sheila come watch over them and the del hagan while they're traveling away and we pray that this whole weekend the covering of the lord will be here in this place and will be anointed of God, anoint the ministers, anoint their words, and Lord bless Fort Charlotte in the morning, uh, the bilingual service, oh God, the bridge, building the bridge, every effort of our people to worship you, and to give you the glory, and to give you the praise. Be with those from out of the city, across the nation, be with everyone that needs you, and be with America and lead our president and help him, God, because we're to honor him in his office. We're to honor the men and women who lead the nation and we're to honor the ministry that brings the word. We pray that this will be a great move of God. The trumpet of the Lord will sound tonight and there'll be a moving of the spirit Throughout all the evening, we're together, and the Bible from God, it can break out at any time. In the name of Jesus, give us safety in the rock that is higher than we are. In praise Jesus' name. Amen. And everyone said, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. The ushers will assemble and get ready to receive our offering. We're looking forward to an abundant giving and sharing of God's spirit. Thank you for giving. Thank you for giving again, again, and again. May God bless every widow's might for every abundant that is given the offering to the Lord. May God has blessed over his people. I'm glad to see Sister Gina Michelle tonight. Gina, welcome. Welcome back. We missed you while you've been gone. And the Lord bless you real good. Gina's up in the outskirts of Tampa now working, but this is still her church. And she loves the Lord, loves the people of God here. And one day she'll be back home with us uh, again. But this is her home. Uh, pray for uh, Paul and Cindy. And God will help them. They're dear children of God. They love God. We love them. Pray for all of God's people. Don't leave anyone out. Pray for all the people of God. Uh, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples because you have loved one to another. Praise God. So let's practice that. We're so glad to have uh, everybody home to be sharing uh, Walker back home with us from the bereavement services for her sister. Praise we're happy to have her. 
All right, may Thank God you, bless you, son. And they're coming to receive your offering. And uh, praise God. We're glad to see Brother Edgar and his wife and my little baby. Oh, yeah. Yes, we uh, we uh, missed uh, when Edgar had to go to Costa Rica, and his lovely wife had to be uh, with be with him, the children. But thank God for the miracle in the baby's life. Nothing, no, nothing there. Uh, all the affliction gone. And uh, thank God for their son and their little daughter. And they got back from Costa Rica. And they're back here now to labor in the church. But Edgar uh, ministers in Costa Rica. And God has used him. And he's used him here. And we want the ministers to be active in this church yes. and bless us with the Word and with the Word of God. We're, we're going to enjoy the Word of God. We're going to enjoy the ministry. Brother Carlson has something uh, good in his heart tonight. And I love Brother Carlson. To you that don't know him, this man pastoring in Brooklyn uh, in the Northeast and Hartford, Connecticut, many years. Uh, labored in Jamaica, labored in Africa, uh, labored in India, uh, across many, many places. Your feet have carried you. And uh, we're honored to have him abiding and living in our assembly now. And uh, I think the gift of God that works in him, as I do all the ministers. May God bless us and give us a great weekend. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Great.
good, wasn't that great? Wonderful, wonderful. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. but I finally got it because the doctor wouldn't give up on it. And my insurance company told him that I would be the one and only one that they would approve this medication for. Praise God. Yes. Oh, Lord. Yes. He thought I would probably be the first person in this part of the country cured of hepatitis C. Oh, Lord. Well, in about four weeks, it went down the undetectable. Hey, and, uh, hey. it, it, it nine weeks, and the medication itself cost almost a hundred thousand dollars. Cost me nothing. Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise Lord. Lord. And I went back for my yearly checkup. Yeah. Come on. And uh, had to take blood tests and everything. And uh, the doctor that had Dr. Cassantry, he walked in the door with a big smile on his face. You could always, he wore his feelings on his sleeve. <laughs> and he said, your blood work is perfect. Praise <laughs> <Pretty great. laughs> oh, 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 was a little high, but it's always been a little high. Yeah. And he said, <laughs> I think you're the first person to be healed of hepatitis C around here. Amen, amen. And then he said something, thank you're you perfectly Lord. all right. And then he said, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Anyway, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God delivered them out of all. Yes, He does. He doesn't leave yes. the, the the devil doesn't have a chance. Nope. <laughs> Somebody said one time, "I've got a mighty enemy, and I do, but I've got an almighty friend." All right. Yes. All right. Amen. Amen. I have a wise enemy, but I've got an all wise friend. Say it again. All wise. Yeah. Jesus has been so good to us all. Yes. But I would like to, uh, I know I haven't been up for a while. Bless Brother Thomas. I haven't really felt good for a while. But I'd like to put that behind me. Yes. Yes. And I want to talk to you something I've never talked on. But I've been studying a long time on it using words from my mentors and uh, also pray and ask God to touch my mind on it because I think it's very important that as the children of God we know exactly who we are. And, right, right, brother, man. Yeah. and I don't think we do. Come on now. Come on. I think that we need to learn something new terminology. We need to study the word a new creature. Yes. Amen. What does it really mean to be a new creature? Amen. I found out a few days after I received the Holy Ghost, I wasn't all so new as I thought I was. 
We need to learn that the word Old Testament and New Testament are misnomers. Yes, yes. They're, they're really not two separate books. Come on. <coughs> come on. One is the book of promises. Yes, come on. And the other is the confirmation That's right. and the fulfillment of those promises. Amen. 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 There is nothing new in the New Testament you can't find in the Old Testament. It's all there. Loving one another is there. Uh, circumcision of the heart is there. Everything that in the New Testament you can find in the Old Testament. We used to always say this, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed and that's not so. We need to get rid this idea that I'm a spiritual Jew. Uh huh. Sit. Yes. Yes, that's all. That's a falsehood. That's I can't right. find spiritual Jew. <laughs> I'm not a spiritual Jew, and this church is not spiritual Israel. Blessed be the Lord. <coughs> and speaking of a new creature, I'm going to follow some of my notes here. But when I received the Holy Ghost, sometimes it gets me emotional when I talk on it, because even I did not know who I really was. I thought I was a spirit of Jew and found out that I'm the seed of Abraham. Praise God. Yeah. I found out that the church that I'm, got, that I'm going to is not spiritual Judaism, but it actually is the remnant of the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. I'm just as much the seed of Abraham as Isaac ever was. Amen. I'm just as much the seed of Abraham as Jacob ever was. Amen. And this church is just as much a part of what God is doing as he was what he's doing yes. working with Abraham. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. And over here is it in Romans the second chapter. Yeah. I'll go through some scriptures. Because I think when you get a message like this, it should make you want to serve God all the more. Yes. Yeah. Right. Come make on. you want to work. See, I don't think I, I really think that when we start singing, I think praise ought to break out in the house of God. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I, believe I think it. when we walk through the door, the praise ought to break out in the house of God. Yeah. Yeah. I, somebody said, told me one time, I asked, what, what's prayer for? Let's get your mind on God. You mean you came to church and your mind wasn't on God? On. What were you thinking about on your way to church? Shame on it. Shame on it. I said, why do we need to sing all these choruses? Well, that's to get us in the spirit. That's right. I should have come to church in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Well, what was I thinking of? What was I thinking? Coming to church. See, I've always felt, yes. and I've taught this wherever I've pastored, that this room right here, this sanctuary, <coughs> this is not a place to talk about your vacation. Amen. Not a place to talk about what you're going to do tomorrow. Amen. This is not the place where you conduct your business. Amen. I had a brother showing me some pictures one time of vacation. He was on and said, Brother, the sanctuary, take me out in the hallway to you. The sanctuary is for worshiping God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And here in Romans, yes. the second chapter, verse 28, <laughs> makes a statement like this. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly. That's gone. Used, used to be that way, but it's not that way anymore. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. I'm not a spiritual Jew. When I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the foreskin of my heart was cut away 
I am no longer a, a spiritual Jew. I am of the seed of Abraham. You are of the seed of Abraham. Yes. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God. In the ninth chapter of Romans, he's talking Paul, he's talking the Romans. The, 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 the message in the first century church actually was they were trying to persuade the Jews and then the Gentiles that Jesus Christ was the seed that confirmed the covenant made to Abraham and the covenant made to David. The covenant made to Moses <coughs> was confirmed by the blood of sheep and goats. They sprinkled the sanctuary, they sprinkled everything with the blood. But the confirmation of Abraham uh, covenant made with him and the covenant made with David never had blood shed for that. Thus, for 2,000 years, the covenant made to Abraham lay dormant until Jesus came. Praise God. And here in the ninth chapter of Romans, start with the fourth verse, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises, promises, who are the fathers and of whom is concerning the flesh, Christ came who is over all, God blessed forever, amen. amen. Not as though the word of God had, not, had been of none effect. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. And we've got to understand tonight that everything that calls itself the body is not the body. Come on, Amen. 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 We could be here in this church tonight and not have the right perspective toward God. Right. Come on now. Or the right perspective toward blood. Because I am going to talk a little bit about the precious blood of Jesus Amen. Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. You talked about it the other night. Yes. And what makes the blood of Jesus so precious is this. You've got to understand something about medical facts, scientific facts, and forensic facts as where a baby gets his blood from. Come on. It may get a little quiet. Go ahead. But I've studied this. And when you touch, do a, a DNA on a baby, you can find the DNA of the father. That's right. yeah. You cannot find the DNA of the mother. That's right. That's right. Amen. So if Jesus' blood did not come from Mary, that's right. From once did it come? From whence did the blood of Jesus Christ come from? From God the Father. It had to come from God the Father. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's what makes it precious. Yes. Is because humanity never touched the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. When you understand that he was willing to shed that blood for you and I to have life when the blood touched the ground, brother. Yes. It proved to us that someday the curse is going to be lifted. Amen. Yes, amen. And so here, he went on to say here, not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. And I'd like to tell the body, everything that claims it's the body is not the body. Amen. Right. And everybody that claims they're a child of God is not the child of God. Amen. But you and I tonight can have the confidence in our heart yes. that we're not only a child of God. I went down a Gentile. I came up a child of God. Yes. I went down nothing but a dog. But I came up the seed of Abraham. Yes. That's what the Holy Ghost is. That's what you can see that I have tonight. See, I'm a 
Scandinavian by nature, Swedish. And Swedes don't get along with people too well. We are an introverted group of people. Brother, my wife will tell you, I've got the DNA of a Swede. I'm very, I'm very comfortable being alone. But that's changing. Thank God. Because I'm not a Swede anymore. I don't care what nationality you are. I don't care what race you're from. If you've got the Holy Ghost, brother, you're a seed of Abraham. So, here we are. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they, are they the children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Yes. I'm not only of the seed of Abraham, but I'm from the seed of Isaac. See, some people come come out of Abraham, but if you didn't come through Isaac, <laughs> if you came through Esau, yes, right. You're not of the seed. You may be of the seed of Abraham, <laughs> but you got to go a little bit further than that. Amen. 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 You see, Jesus. Come on, had to not only be of the seed of Abraham, he had to be of the seed of David. That's right. Amen. Amen. And Mary had to also be the seed of Abraham and the seed of David. But there the division took place. And Jesus came through Solomon, down through Joseph. Mary came through Nathan, another son of David, yes. down through that lineage. And so, he said here, that is, this is the finality of it all. They which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But he said here, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. And when we received the Holy Ghost and we became a seed of Abraham, we are part of all the promises yes. that was made to Abraham, yes. confirmed yes. through Jesus Christ, yes. Yes. and to be fulfilled out here in a few short years. Yes. Amen. Amen. We need to come to that understanding. Oh, yes. When you understand that, the devil can't throw you a curveball. No. When you understand that, no affliction will bring you down. Right. When you understand that, no trouble will cause you to stumble. Come on. Because I'm headed toward the promised land. Come on. Amen. I'm headed toward someplace. Amen. Amen. The, the, all the land, you see something? Netanyahu, or however you want to pronounce that name, the head of Israel, knows what I'm talking about. He does not draw back from building settlements on the West Bank because he knows that that belongs to the Jewish people. Amen. And the leader of the Palestinians who met with President Trump here a couple of days ago said that Israel, for them, to have peace, Israel got to go back to its 1967 boundaries. When it had to been for the United Nations, we wouldn't have any problem in the Middle East because Israel owned it all. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. He also Amen. said that the capital of the Palestinian state has to be East Jerusalem. No. The Jews are not going to stand for that at all. No, indeed not. Because, see, they know in their heart that the land from the river of Egypt all the way over to the great river Euphrates, all the way up around to the great sea belongs to them. Yes. Right. Iraq belongs to Israel. Yes. Yes. Syria belongs to Israel. Yes. Most of Turkey belongs to Israel. 
Saudi Arabia belongs to Israel. Yes. Tell the Muslims to get out of our land because in a few years that's going to be us. All right. All right. In a few years that's going to belong to you and me. Yes. Along with all the children of Abraham. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Oh, the, the promise, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Yeah. Now, when I received the Holy Ghost, I received the promise, oh, and I'm now counted for the seed. Right. Amen. Didn't he say, there's a scripture somewhere that said, and a seed shall serve him and be counted to him for a generation. Amen. Amen. Oh, we may be small, but brother, we're special. Amen. Amen. This is not a spiritual Israel. When you look at us, we are Israel. We are Israel. Yes. Forget all this notion about a spiritual this or a spiritual that. We are the real, genuine, we are the seed. true blood seed of Abraham. Wow. Seed. I believe. One seat. Uh, you can't discount that. Amen. The Abrahamic covenant. Well, let's go over here to Romans 4. Here's, here's a, a tremendous scripture. How do I know that I'm the seed of Abraham? How do I know? that my belief in God and my faith in God has been accepted. How do I know I still, I stand righteous and justified before God? You've got to know that or the devil will steamroll over you. Yes, he will. That's right. But when you know, if you understand, and I hope I get it across halfway decent, when you understand who you are, you can look the devil in the eye and tell him to get behind you. Say it again. Amen, brother. Amen. That's true. You can tell somebody, there's a song that says, I don't tell God how big my mountain is. I go tell my mountain how big my God is. All right. Amen. 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 And I can do that because I belong to him. I didn't before I was a child of the devil. But I went down in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Came up out of there a child of God. That's going to be a new preacher. I've been working on it ever since and trying to live up to it. He said here, fourth chapter of Romans. Verse 11, and he received the sign of circumcision. Talking about Abraham's faith. Mm -hmm. See, next to Jesus Christ, Abraham was the greatest man that ever lived on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. How many people would leave a country that they're familiar with to go to another country they knew nothing about that they didn't even know where it was at? <laughs> <laughs> I've never left my home without knowing where I was going. <laughs> but Abraham did. Abraham left his family behind him, took his wife, his nephew, yes. and headed out looking for a city whose ruler, for a city to come. maker was God. Amen. And he never turned back from whence he came. <laughs> and when we started on this journey, we know where we're going. Yes, we do. We're headed toward the kingdom of God. Yes, we are. Amen. My God, praise God. Yes. Now, he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised. Now, how do I know that God has accepted my faith in him? and my belief in him and imputed to me the right, same righteousness he imputed to Abraham imputed to me my justification whether I receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost 
but the evidence was speaking another That's tongue. Right. Yeah, amen. And I came up from there yes. realizing that my faith had been accepted, yes. my belief had been accepted, yes. my righteousness had been yes. accepted, oh. my justification had been accepted, yes. and every time I speak in tongues, oh and every time I feel the Spirit moving in my life, that belief lets me believe my faith is still all right. All right. That lets me believe that my righteousness is still intact. My justification is still there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, wonder I love Amen. having the Holy Amen. Holy Amen. Spirit of God. Amen. It's a sign to me that even though I may have missed it here and missed it there and stumbled over there, that was still all right with God. Yes. And God was still working in my life. And God was still making his home for me. Amen. Amen. Brother Jesus Christ was still there. Hallelujah. 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 Every time, every time I feel the Spirit, Amen. Every time I feel the Spirit means more to me tonight than it's ever been. Because it's telling me Amen. your faith is all right. Your, your belief is all right. Amen. Your righteousness is still there. Yes. Your justification is still there. Yes. And you're still moving on yes. with our yes. Lord and Savior, yes. Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. The Abraham covenant. I know I won't get through all this lesson tonight. Don't even intend to try. But I'll be up again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Finish it there. Praise God. Because to me, this is one of the most important doctrines. Yes, it is. Yes. The teachings in the Bible. Yes. Is that the Abrahamic covenant is still alive. Oh, yeah. The Davidic covenant is still alive. Yes, it is. And right now, it has been confirmed. The first advent of Christ confirmed these covenants, and the second advent will fulfill them. Yes, yes. Yes. Amen. The Abrahamic covenant was renewed and confirmed by Jesus Christ. Romans 15, 8. You, you can't cover this in a night. You can't cover this sinner in a weekend. <clears throat> you you spoke on some, but brother, you can't cover this in a weekend. You can't do it. Take more than a weekend. You could be up here Saturday night till midnight, <coughs> Sunday afternoon, Sunday. Yes, you, can't you can't cover it because you got to go into the first resurrection. Yes. <coughs> Come on now. You've got to go into the curse that's being lifted. You have to go into the kingdom of God because the Abrahamic covenant covers every bit of it. Yes. Amen. Sure. Amen. <coughs> Here in the 8th eighth, eighth verse, the 15th chapter of Romans, it said, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision. Yes. He came to the Jews. Yes. But they didn't receive him. And later on, it opened the door for the Gentiles, but the Abrahamic covenant covered us Gentiles. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. The Abrahamic covenant and the Davidic covenant covers us Gentiles. Yes, it does. It was prophesied to Gentiles it would be a light to the Gentiles. Yes, and he said, circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. There's no new promise in the New Testament. <coughs> the promises are in the Old Testament. Yes. Jesus' main reason of coming to this earth was to shed his precious blood to confirm the covenants that were made to the fathers, including the resurrection from the dead, yes. redemption, yes. curses being lifted, yes. the kingdom of God, yes. all that's covered in those promises. Yes. Yes, it is. And it's all there under the heading of the Abrahamic 
covenant. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.20. I believe it is. Have that right or maybe 2 Corinthians. This also shows, it says, the promises of God are in him, yea, and amen. That's right. All the promises <laughs> that were made in the Old Testament are confirmed in Christ, yeah. and tonight is yea, and amen. We do not have to worry about it. And if we are faithful to Christ, we're going to inherit everything that Christ is going to inherit. Yes. Because we are heirs of God. I see, yes. this is another thing. I went down in the baptism of the Holy Ghost with no inheritance whatsoever. When my father passed away, he left my inheritance with a toolbox full of old rusty tools. I'm not being facetious about that. That's what it was. And uh, I rose up from the baptism of the Holy Ghost yeah. with a godly inheritance. Yes, you did. I woke up with something laid out before me that I could not obtain without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen, brother. It changed my future. It changed everything about me. Absolutely. The outlook on life. Absolutely. Although there's been times when I've asked God to take me home, and he keeps saying no. Yes. <laughs> so, the early church, I'm about to take this I want to make, did not make void the covenant of the promises that were made to Abraham. Right. right. Amen. It was the job of the first century church to prove to the Jewish nation and then to the Gentiles that, that Jesus was the seed. This is why in the second chapter of Hebrews, we use the scripture wrong. <laughs> Some people do try to prove Christ had a fall of nature, and they'll use this. I'm not going to tell you whether he had a fall of nature or not tonight, but this is not a scripture that you use. You had to say to the Hebrews that he took not upon himself the nature of angels, but above the took on himself the nature, nature, nature of angels, the seed of Abraham. This is why every part of this Bible is important. That's right. I know that in the Old Testament there are scriptures and chapters that are very boring to read. But I read them anyway. The genealogy in Matthew 1 and Luke 3 was put in the Bible to prove that both Joseph and Mary came down to Abraham and David and then on down to their lineage. Yes. I'm not going to go through the scriptures to prove to you the, the promises that were made to Abraham. You can read them in the 12th chapter of Genesis, 15th chapter of Genesis, and in the 17th chapter of Genesis, 22nd chapter of Genesis. These are all the promises that were made to Abraham. He was going to have a seed forever. One of the promises made to Abraham was that his name would always be great in the earth. Yes, it's not great right now. Let me talk about Abraham. But in the resurrection, if you're in the first resurrection, you're going to find out that next to Jesus Christ, Abraham was the greatest man in the sight of God. Amen. 
and throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity, we'll be mentioning the name Abraham. I don't know about you, I can't really get my mind around the fact that someday I can sit and talk with Abraham. I can sit and talk with Isaac. Oh, what a day. I would love to sit and talk with Paul, what a day. Peter, James, and John. Amen. I can't get my mind around it that I'm going to be there with these great men that I read about in the Bible. Amen. Better start tonight. <laughs> yes. But that's going to happen. Amen. You women are going to get to meet Mary. Praise God. Amen. You're going to get to meet Sarah. Bathsheba, all these great names of the Bible. Remember, they were human beings just like we're human beings. They were changed by God just like we're being changed by God. They were given the same promises that we've been given. Rather, the law and the, and the songs and the prophets all were given to elaborate on the Abrahamic the Davidic covenant. Hallelujah. Didn't the statement made when, when, when uh, the angel was talking to uh, Mary, didn't he say something like this? That he will inherit the throne of his father, David. And there's a tremendous chapter, uh, and the, there's the third chapter of Jeremiah. After the battle of Armageddon is over, and I believe it was Gorbachev who wrote an article in Time magazine just the other day, and he said, it looks to him like the world's getting ready for war. And I said, you got it right, though. Right. Donald Trump is not only in office to help Christianity, he's helping to get the world ready for war. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes, and all the, all the uh, saber rattling in the Middle East is one day going to start the end. Yep. Yes, it will. Yep. And uh, you have to understand what's really going on. I can't talk about it now. What's going on in the world and what's behind all this chaos. But there is an organization that's behind every bit of it. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. They've been working on it since 1919, yep. organized in 1921 and are financed by some of the largest uh, foundations in America. And if you talk out against them, you'll find them at your door. But I don't worry about all of that because when I see all of this happening, my head goes up. Because I know my redemption. Am I scared about what's going on? Not in the least. Fear not. I'm worried more about bugs getting in my house. Not giving us the spirit of fear. But as far as what's going on in the world, it doesn't trouble me. You see, I've got this in, in my heart. Because the fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant requires a resurrection. Yes. It requires the curses of God be, uh, that we put on this earth, the lifting of the curses. That's right. Amen. It requires an establishment of a kingdom. If you read Isaiah, the ninth chapter, the sixth verse is the, is the confirmation of the Abrahamic covenant, the seventh verse is the fulfillment of it. Praise God. Because when there, there of his peace and kingdom, there will be no end no upon no the throne of David. Yeah. So, I want to make 
sure I got everything important. Here, I want to crop them just a little bit in Galatians 3. Praise chapter. I've had trouble with my Bible because it's really old. But I've been using this bottle of Bible <coughs> for 50 years. I found out in 1999 it went out of print. And I can't find one. So I've got to use this one she put it together with duct tape, whatever it takes yeah. to keep it together. Because I go through Bibles. In Galatians, the third chapter, it says like this. Starts in verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, this is one thing that happened when Christ went to the cross. Yep. He took the curse that was on you upon him. Curses everyone that hangs on a tree that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentile through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of man, though it be but a man's covenant. In other words, when you go out here and you sign a contract for a home or a car, there's the party of the first part and the party of the second part. There's the person that will make the offer to another. And then you have to, part of the second part has to sign that contract. And when that contract is signed, nobody can add to it, and nobody can take from it. Nope. That's a contract you have to meet, or you'll be taken to court. Right. So it's the same way with us. The covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law, God was a party of the first part. He made the promise to Abraham. But it was not confirmed until Christ went to Golgotha. Yes. And he confirmed it. Yep. Nobody can add to the promise of Abraham. Nope. That's it. And thank God nobody can take no, anything. Amen. 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 I don't care what that fellow the Palestinians said. The Palestinians have never owned the West Bank. That's right, they never have. The Turks owned it for hundreds of years. The Jordanians took it over after World War One. During the Six Day War, the Jordanians fled back to Jordan and Israel took it. Because it belongs to them. There is a story that in the Six Day War, a large Egyptian army was down in the valley, coming over the hill. They looked up and they saw tanks. Armored vehicles, a large army. The Egyptians, this story was in Newsweek magazine. The Egyptians threw down their weapons and surrendered. And when the Israelis came up, they looked around. The Egyptians and said, where's that army that was with you? <laughs> he said, we're all we got. We're it. You know who that army was? Yeah. That was the same army that's a servant of Elijah Islam. God is still with that nation. I want to be a part of it. Don't you? Hallelujah. The law, which was 430 years later, cannot dis disannul that. It should make the promise of none effect. For the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. So, you have to remember one thing else. No country has ever went out of existence and hundreds of years later 
came back into existence. Right. Amen. 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 As it happened, but one time. One time. Yep. Amen. That country, Israel, went out of existence. Yep. Amen. It was almost the same as AD 70. For all these many, many years, there was no Israel. <coughs> Of 1948, because God made an Abraham promise to Israel, and for us to realize that Israel is in its own land tonight, let us know that the promises of Abraham are true; they're being fulfilled, and we can rest in the fact that God is still working in the earth. Amen. 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 Israel back in its land lets us know. We're getting close to the end. That's right. Yes, Gorbachev, we are preparing for war. Yes. I'm preparing for war, for war by making my life straight with God. Amen. 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 That's where I want to end tonight. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Amen. Amen. There's so much on this. So you could bring in 1 Corinthians 15, yes. the chapter in Thessalonians that talks about the resurrection. That's so good. You can bring in everything to it, and it's all covered Amen. by that promise. But God, but God, who made that promise to Abraham, God. he confirmed it by Christ. Yes. He gave that same God that made the promise. Abraham filled him with the Holy Ghost that made him the seed of Abraham. Amen. 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 Folks Thank you. Out here, yeah. you have to understand something. God is not going to be denied. That's nope. right. No. Nope. He's God made these promises. And because you won't keep the law, or the word of God doesn't make it of none effect. Amen. There's somebody going to do it. It might just as well be us. Amen. Somebody is going to march along with God towards the promised land. It might as well be us. Somebody's going to be in the south of Abraham. It might as well be us. Somebody is going to hold up the, the promises of Abraham to Abraham. It might as well be us. It's time for us to get with it. Amen. Yes, it is. Right. Our, our, our example is Abraham. That's Sometimes it. we get too slowful. That's it. Yep. Yep. I do. Yes. There are times I feel like I should study, but I'm human. I don't really feel like it. Yes. Sometimes I give it. Yes. But you all can tell. I've been studying. Amen. 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 And when I get a hold of something like this, it thrills me. Yes, it does. I can't sit down in my house for a few minutes or have something like this, and I walk around the house and I thank God. And I walk back at it and I go at it again. And I get back up, walk around the house, and go back at it again. Go back at it again. Praise God, yes. Because I'm thrilled with what God is doing. Amen, brother. Yeah. Amen. So I think it's going to be a great church. Yes. But that's not my final destiny. Do I think it's going to be revival? Yes. But that's not my de final destiny. Come on, my on. mind goes beyond revival. Yeah. My yeah. mind goes beyond a restored church. Yeah. I want to be there. When Christ resurrects yes. the church of God, Praise as God. he comes yes. through the clouds, I wouldn't want to miss it, would you? No. No. I want to be there when all the saints of God yes. and the Holy Angels and Jesus Christ get the power and Thank begin God. that march yes. through the session on into Jerusalem yes. for their hallelujah Praise and the kingdom of God is set up. And Jesus is there. And all the nations are pouring into that. I don't want to be there. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, we do. When it's all over. Amen. See why I love that song. I just got to make it. Amen. Just got to get there. Amen. To serve God for 50, 60, going on 70 years. Yes. Yes. You realize I'm only a year or two months away from me. 
Blessed be the Lord. Seems like I just a teenager. Praise Praise God. God. No, I don't slow down. <laughs> Promises of God are to me. Praise God. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love looking at us in faces because Amen. you're the inheritance That's right. of God. Yes. Yes. Amen. Oh, I want to be there Amen. when all these great changes. Can you imagine a body with no pain? Can you imagine a, po a body that never gets sick? You, you, can you imagine women bringing forth children and they don't have to worry about that children going bad? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine it? Can you imagine a, a, a city? Say, so you go out and go out here and go out this gate out here and start walking east, you're headed for trouble. Yeah, sure. There are some places in this town you don't go after dark. Amen. You realize in the new world, you'll walk down any street you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You realize in the new world, nobody will make you afraid. You rise, you'll sit under your own vine and your own thick tree, and nobody will make you afraid. You realize troubles will be over. Brother, your sufferings will be over. My sufferings will be over. Curse will be lifted. Right now, we, my, my wife plants all these little things. She'll come running in and say, the bugs are after them. And it's a fight yes. pray to pray grow pray. anything. Mainly in Florida because you don't have any cold weather to kill it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard. Yeah. A robust bug. And now we don't have any rain. No. And our nice grapevine looks like it's dried up. Oh, brother, it's dried up. you realize? See, I'm, I'm telling you, you can go out all night. Amen. You right, and the Bible says that the plowman, the plowman will overtake the reaper. Yep. Yes. And in other words, their crops will be so good, you can't get them all fixed. All, all picked before here they come planting again. Amen. Even the rider on the horses <coughs> will save righteousness. Holiness unto the Lord. Holiness yeah. unto the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Can't you imagine a world where the least to the greatest know God? Hallelujah. You don't have to worry about inviting something on somebody over and, and you're going to wonder whether they're of God or not. For all be of God. From the least unto the greatest. Oh, yes. I don't think President Trump is really a religious man, but he does favor Christianity. Yes, he does. Do you realize in the kingdom of God, you'll be God's children ruling over the world? Amen, brother. You want equality? Yes. The black race has been wanting equality for 50, 60 years. They've been marching and getting it, wanting to get it, and they're not going to get there. You can't change men's heart by legislation. Amen. It takes God to change. That's right. Amen. 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 Praise. Yeah. The heart is deceitfully wicked, and who can know that was quoted the other night. My answer to that is, I can't know your heart, but I better get well acquainted with mine. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. Right. Right. <laughs> I better exercise enough judgment on myself to wonder Come on. get my heart right with God. Don't they have a Come song on. out say, is thy heart right with God? Yes. Yes. Right. I would like to be in a kingdom oh, yes. where everybody's heart Amen. is right with God. Amen. And we're on our way to that kingdom right now. Amen. What did they sing a song right here? Come and go with me. I'm on my way, come and go with me. So tonight, thank you for listening to me.
Thank God for the word.
in a moment. I want to try to cap this all, if I can, to the Lord aiding me. Oh, God. The Bible said, very important that you believe the Bible. Right. Because if you can't believe God's word, you can't get the joy that the Lord wants you to have tonight. You won't have the, that, that, you know, the turbulence of your soul will continue as a fleshly man or a fleshly woman. You will not know the peace that passes understanding. You will not live in that world of anticipation and hope that every Christian should yes. be living in. Right. Every child of God yes. should be living in an ecstasy. I'm amazed at the whole church when we sing a song like that. Doesn't it get your hands up in the air? Come on. Amen. Come on. I'm amazed that you can sit in that chair and not just reach out and say, oh, I don't get that excited. You will get that excited one day. Yeah. And the day will come when you will get that excited. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I just don't do that. What if Jesus appeared to you right now? Would you sit there in that same manner? Would you sit there in that same manner? Well, let me give you the joy of the Lord tonight. He is appearing. He is here. He is present. His glory is in this house. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. My God, I want to make this building rock of you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise our God. The anticipation of that day when a river shall flow by my mind. I, I cannot, I will not, I shall not be a part of this lackadaisical, yes. phlegmatic, laid back yes. generation. Yes. I am too excited yes. about yes. Jesus yes. and his power yes. and his reality and his love yes. and his joy yes. and his peace. Yes. Why can't I have myself a real right. Holy Spirit filled? Oh, yes. I'm going to the name. the desert 
will be blossoming like a rose and the glory of God will be in the house of God and Jerusalem will be the capital of the world and there will be a king visiting that capital regularly and he will be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There will be no crippled children born. St. Jude's will go out of business. Praise God. There will be no more collection for St. Jude's Hospital for crippled children with cancer. Little ones five years old with cancer. But no more of that because the desert will blossom and bloom and a river will flow in the desert. I tell you on Saturday night here, we're getting ready for the millennium. We're getting ready to be a part of, of that great work of God of the seed of Abraham that will be the covenant being confirmed. Praise God. And I, I'm excited. I believe the message this man preached. I, I, don't, I didn't find anything in it that I couldn't say amen to. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe that we no longer are old creation. We are new creation. And you can't be half new and half old to stop it. Amen. Come on, come on. Let, let's get out of that. Well, I'm, I'm, I think I'm half born. I, I think I'm, I'm I, I, I think I think I may be a child of God one day. No, no, you get out of that because God is going to work you over, work through you, work in you until you are going to be of the seed of Isaac and of Abraham. Praise God, and your child and your children will be blessed to the Lord. Brother Bob, I, I watched you as a young man. Now you're going to become a father, and you're in this church. And you were here when you were a young man yourself. Uh, here, your, uh, your your mother sitting right beside the mother of your child sitting right beside you. God didn't bring you together. God didn't bring you to the church. God didn't bring her here. And she said to me, "I I like the church." I like what I feel. Yeah. She wasn't telling me a story. No. No, I believe, young no. woman, God brought you here yeah. so that that which is in you yeah. as a child to be born, not only will you be blessed and will Bob be blessed, but you can do the will of God and step out in faith and go from here and let your life be together in the Holy Spirit. And that child that will be born of your womb will not be a child that you will fear will be unbalanced or have anything wrong, but it can be blessed of God the rest of its days right on into the millennium. Praise the name of the Lord. At the coming of Jesus, your family can be dedicated uh, to the Lord. There, the, we are not old creation any longer. We are nearing the time when there's going to be a desert and a, a, a river will be in that desert. Praise God. And a light from heaven will descend. Amen. Amen. Let me give you this. I'm going to cut it off right here. But in Genesis 1, uh, the scripture said, yes. in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and earth was without void and, and uh, without form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Genesis 1, 1 and 2, 1 and 3. And God said, and God, God said. said. Everyone God say with me, and God, and God said. God said. That was part of it. That was all of you. And God, and God said. said. God God said. said. Now, that was two-thirds of you. And God, and God said. said. And God said, and let there be light, and there was light. That's why the church is not going to be a dead church, a dry church. A river is breaking out in our desert tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know what that light was? When he said, let there be light, he said, let there be light. You know what that light was? It was Jesus appearing as the creator, creating all things by the hand of his Father. And when he appeared, there was light. There was light. Where did light come from? The sun had not been created. It was four days later. It was four creative days later that the sun was created. 
Someone said, well, uh, the sun gave up. And there was light. My well, friend, the sun didn't, wasn't even created till the fourth day. So where did that light come from? That light was Jesus Christ. Yeah. The light of the planet Earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus stepped on the planet Earth and said, let there be light. And from his personage, there's no need of a, in the temple of God in Genesis 22nd chapter, the Revelation 22nd chapter, in the end of all things, there is no need of the sun. There's no need of the sun, nor of the moon, in the, in the heaven. Why? Because the Lamb is the light of it. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lamb is the light of it. Let me tell you something. When Jesus stepped on the planet Earth, I know he came as a babe in Mary's womb. Uh, 4,000 years after Adam uh, was uh, smitten from the garden. But long before he came, Long before he came, as a babe, God incarnate in the womb of Mary the Virgin. Jesus was the angel of God's presence as Israel journeyed over the wilderness. Praise the name of the Lord. And long before he was the angel of God's presence, he was that light. When God said, let there be light, who was it that became the light? It was Jesus that stepped out of heaven, of heavens, put his foot on the earth, and suddenly out of the darkness of the cosmos called the earth, there was light more brilliant than the sun. He's more brilliant than the sun. The sun can compare to Jesus. And the sun shining with all its might on its clearest day can never, can never compare with Jesus. When Jesus comes back, in the second half then, and comes again. Uh, you talk about a desert lining up. Uh, you talk about a river flowing in that desert. You talk about flowers growing all over creation. You talk about light springing up. You talk about babies being born not crippled. You talk about uh, the earth uh, getting rid of the curse that's in it, and the horror, and the horror, and the terror that's in it. It will not happen when he puts his feet back on this earth again. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, why are you preaching this way, Brother Wallace? Because I want you to get happy right here and realize you don't, your, your investment, your, your desire, uh, your future is not in this society, in this world. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Praise the name of the Lord. There are greater things. There are more mighty things. There are good things. There's joy in the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm going to do something right now. Praise God. I want you everyone to get out of those chairs. March right up to this front right here. Come right on up here. Praise God. And I want you to start shouting on your way up here. The king is coming. The king is coming. Praise God. The king is coming. Praise the name of the Lord. The king is coming. Right now, while you're standing up here, if you want the Holy Spirit.
Spirit to fall on you. If you want to be renewed, if you want to be reclaimed, lift your hand right now and lay it and say, Brother Marlon, I'm ready. I'm ready. I want the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the love of God. I want the King to step into my heart and step into my being because I know and I believe He's coming.
back to the explosion day tomorrow. It's Mother's Day. We have a special treat for the mothers that will be here. There's dinner in the dining room. Uh, I got a quick praise report. Yes, you can. Praise God. Um, you guys know I just went and seen my mom and my stepdad. Uh, they both have Alzheimer's. And it's not good. They're, it was hard for me to go there and see him in that condition. But while I was there, my husband had to leave on Easter Sunday to go tend to his mother. She was having a triple bypass on her stomach. She's been having trouble for years. And these doctors have just done stent after stent in places they would go and clean them out. Nothing was working. She would swell up to where she almost looked like she was six months pregnant. Her stomach was hard, everything. Um, so they went in and did the surgery. Lonely got in the vehicle. That was on a Monday. They did the surgery. On Tuesday, he decided, his sister said, just go ahead, I'll, I'll stay here with her. Everything's gonna be fine. I get a phone call, he's on his way home, and I mean, he is in tears. And I said, babe, what's wrong? He goes, Terry just called me. My, my mom stopped breathing. Well, first she says, something was telling mom, mom, something's wrong, something's wrong. And mom says, oh, there's nothing wrong with me, I'm fine. Well, the nurse walked by and heard and said, let me look at you, Mrs. Boyce, and check you out. She stopped breathing again. They said, they called for the doctor. They said, let's get the doctor on call. Let's get her into surgery. They went to take her into surgery. Now, this is how good God is. This is how good God is. This is how good God is. This is how good. They had a team of doctors there that had just finished up hadn't even finished getting all their stuff taken care of in there. They said, get her in here now. While she was in there, she had stopped, she had stopped breathing three times. And uh, they went ahead, took her in for emergency surgery, put in a pacemaker. She has not been in rehab, nothing. She is home, Amen. she is fine, she's sore. She's almost 83 years old. She just went through two double knee, she had a knee replacement a year later, a knee replacement, and then this. But she's sore, but other than that, she is doing fine, Amen. and she is going to be fine. And I just want to give God the praise. That's what I told Mom that I just felt in me. I said, I have a praying mother-in-law. I can call her anytime. Mom, I need you. And she's there. You know, and I just want to give God the praise of the Lord. Give God what he does. Yeah. So he is still working. He is still on the front and he is still there working. Yes, yes, he is. Give God the praise. That's just a little bit of what God's doing all over the land. Uh, dinner in the dining room tomorrow, right, Jim? Right? Yes, it's on the board. And on the screen, look, and we bring salad fixing, dinner rolls, and desserts. They're working very hard to make the dining room a beautiful place for tomorrow. Everyone that possibly can, I, I don't understand this Mother's Day, but if you possibly can, share with us in the dining room. We'll enjoy having everyone possible to be there. And you that are going to be there and will contribute and bring something, it will be salad fixings, dinner rolls, and dessert, and uh, uh, what else on there? Uh, from that, I can't uh, say it. Go back over to the menu I'm, and then we'll come back to Bill of Race there. The salad fixings, <laughs> dinner rolls, and desserts. All right, thank you for doing that. Uh, that praise report is wonderful. I'm glad to see Christine with us tonight, too, yes, down there. Yeah, Sister yeah. Christine, the Lord bless you. Christina. I'm a Christina, I'd say Christine, Christina. But um, she's been with us many times. <coughs> But you should come home and be home. That lion will leave you. That lion will leave you. Praise God. And so we look forward to it. It's good to see Brother Manny able to be out. Well, he's back. I'm so happy to see you. And uh, Brother Merriman. And I told Brother Merriman that he doesn't have to sit back there. As one of the ministers, he can sit up here in one of these chairs. And I 
I've never liked to hear Brother Matt. I've never get up again and preach again. Yes, amen. Let's just say that. Would you like to hear that? Yes, amen. 